Okay. First question. Guys, welcome to Team Netherlands. Congratulations. Questions, please. Yes. I have one question for Paul and one question for the double players. Uh, so for Paul, uh, how uh, did you manage the nerves of the team uh, during the, the week and during the day also? Because you know you, you, you knew that you needed one win, but you lost the first two singles. So how did you manage the nerves? And for uh, Botic and uh, Wesley, uh, how much pressure did you have? Uh, you know, in the last match, how did you handle the pressure? And you know. Uh, how did you, just how did you handle the pressure during the match? Well, today was a roller coaster, um, but uh, we felt that if we played well, we're going to get a shot at every match. Uh, and we did, um, but we just came up short in the first two matches. And then it's the last match and you know you have to do it. But um, yeah. <laughs> We're playing at three o'clock, and we decided, okay, let's make it uh, till the end and make it late. And uh, we didn't want to spoil it for the Dutch fans to, to, you know, to do it already at the first match, and then they go home, and it's, you know, uh, so it was better to do it at the end. So I told the boys, let the singles go, just do it in the doubles. Can I have the pressure? Or no, you can answer the, the pressure. The pressure? Ooh, um, actually, what I was thinking, like, if we, would have lo if we would have lost, we would have had a nice holiday somewhere else. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, both were a good option. So, going to Malaga or going somewhere else. We've already been uh, three years in a row now. Now it's going to be our third year to Malaga. Uh, I have to say, it's tough, tough scheduling with, uh, with some holidays. But, uh, no, I also didn't want to be the guy that Wesley was playing his last match of Davis Cup with, so we prolonged it for him one more week. So uh, that gave me a little bit more. Uh, gave me a little bit more. How do I say? It? Like fire, fire to play for him. Yeah. First of all, congratulations to all of you, Paul. Uh, uh, I remember I saw you winning uh, big, big titles a long time ago and uh, I, I'd like to know uh, what did you feel when you had lost the first match? I mean, did you still think you had a lot of chances or you were pessimistic, optimistic? I was optimistic. We, we, we had, after the first match we didn't have a lot of options, a lot of chances. We had one chance less, but we still have chances and we had still two matches. And, I think our boys played well enough in each match to uh, to create chances uh, to 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 get the, the job done. But every match was tight. It was close. The singles two singles matches were close. The, the doubles match was close. And um, yeah, no, I mean it, it was. I, I felt comfortable and uh, felt felt confident in, in the abilities from uh, all these guys to do the job. So uh, I'm proud of that. And. Uh, I'm happy to go to Malaga again, and um, yeah, I, I felt a little bit though that we should have taken care of the job early in the week. We should, we were much better against the Belgians in the doubles, and somehow we end up losing that match. If we win that match, you know, I felt like okay, we're going to be qualifying sooner. And then today was uh, much tougher against the toughest team to win matches. It's always tough, but. You know, we're, we have a good team and I'm happy we qualified. Can I ask you also if you're surprised that Italy won the group winning the three matches, if the, the, the all 2-1, two, 2-1, one, two, uh, one. and also can you tell us something about the two singles you lost today? What was your impression about Berrettini and... Uh, and, uh, I will leave that last question to, to both these guys. They can yeah. tell about what they thought about Berrettini and Koboli. But yeah. uh, um, no, I, 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 I wasn't. I mean, obviously, the Italian team was the favorite. They had the strongest team. And if you look at their rankings from compared to all the other teams, singles and doubles, they are the strongest teams. I mean, they had three guys in the top 45. Uh, no other team had that, so uh, they were the favourites, and uh, so I'm not surprised they won three matches. Uh, maybe a little bit surprised they only won two one every match, and uh, um, so uh, you know, uh, 
So now these guys can answer the other. Yeah, what I thought I thought from Barry Tini match, um, I think it was a good match overall. Um, I think it was better for two sets, yeah, maybe one and a half set. So, yeah, I, I felt like I was the better player in the first first set and a half. Uh, then I got broken a little bit, unlucky actually, at four or five. And then he started to play better, uh, yeah. He started to play better in the third, create more chances, uh, playing better in the rallies. Of course, he's always serving well. Um, and I think that's what uh, what kept him in the match today, that he served really well. Um, yeah, but overall, I thought it was a, was a good matchup. Um, well, uh, I felt a bit the same, like the match of Botic and Bertini. I felt like I had some chances for, for two and a half sets, maybe. Um, Played a poor tie break, served well throughout the first two sets, didn't face a break point. Um, had some chances at 3 all in the third, but uh, to be honest, all credits to, to Flavio for hanging in there, staying in there, playing great tennis. Uh, I felt like he was playing freely, uh, nothing, nothing to lose, went for a lot of big shots, which, I mean, he had a good couple of uh, last months. He played really well, uh, I like him as a player. So I guess uh, he did well. Um, so yeah, all credits to him. I felt like I didn't play my best in the in the most important points, but I felt like uh, yeah, we had chances in in all three matches. Yeah. One final question, please. Uh, Paul, in general, uh, how make the difference uh, your role, the trainer? Uh, in uh, soccer, uh, the the trainers are uh, at the top. Uh, all many people think. The, uh, the trainers make the difference in uh, the difference in uh, tennis no you can ask that also Paul explain please <laughs> I, 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 I feel um, I feel that um, in tennis a trainer can help but in the end it's the player that has to hit the shot he has to hit uh, the forehand uh, passing or the, the first serve at 30 all or you know so it's um, the trainer will try and help him and, and help him mentally and tactically but in the end it's the, the player itself and that's why tennis is such a difficult sport because you're basically most of the times alone on the court and facing all these difficult positions and decisions in your head right away when the ball comes to you um, yeah so I'm trying to help and uh, I, I, I try to do give 110 percent but it's still the boys that need to make uh, the shot selection and need to stay calm in their heads and need to focus and so yeah i mean i i, I don't want to take too much credit for uh, as a coach i mean uh, they're doing good and so that's uh, i'm happy to be part of it but i definitely won't say uh, tennis the coaches are i mean i mean some of these coaches that have been in tennis i mean if Serena Williams had me as a coach, she would have won at least the same amount of uh, Grand Slams. If she had this guy as a coach, she probably would have had still the same amount of Slams. You know? I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, Sinner is definitely a better player than me. So, yeah, it's easier to coach him to be successful than it is to coach me to be successful. If you want to. Get, have me waiting slams, then you're an unbelievable coach. Yeah, then you must be an unbelievable coach. <laughs> but, so, tennis is more individual. But thanks for the credit for all the Dutch soccer coaches. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you in Malaga. See you in Malaga. Glad not